good to see everybody today. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been working on a lot of guard. In jiu-jitsu, the guard is the primary position that we use. So 70% of our time spent training should be in some sort of guard altercation, whether passing the guard, utilizing the guard to attack our opponent. And that's what we've been working on a lot. Over the last week, or a few weeks, I should say, we've been doing a lot of guard passing. Now, what we're gonna work on this week is going to be a slight departure. We're gonna be talking about some stand-up techniques. Over the next two weeks, we're gonna be working on a few specific uh, takedowns that'll help us with our stand-up technique, but also we're gonna be incorporating guard pulls as well, because guard pulling is a technique that you need to practice and learn how to use. Now, we're gonna be talking about takedowns. Let me just preface this a little bit here. Jiu-Jitsu is primarily a ground-based martial art. So, we look towards other grappling styles for our takedowns, judo and wrestling. These are the other grappling styles that really add and complement jujitsu well. Specifically, we're gonna be focusing on some wrestling style takedowns. Now, we're gonna be spending this uh, class tonight focused on the double leg. I wanna make sure that we're clear here. Takedowns take a lot of time and a lot of effort to get confident with. And the reason I'm saying this is because I want you guys to realize that as beginners in jiu-jitsu, honestly, it's far more effective to know how to just pull guard. However, you absolutely must know basic takedowns, not only so that you can use them, but also so that you can defend against them. And you might not realize, but because they can also help you with your sweeps. Oftentimes when we're attacking a sweep, we may need to turn it into a takedown. And if we've never done a takedown before, then we're not gonna have as much of a nuanced sweeping arsenal. So, all that to say, when you're first learning jujitsu, the guard pull is going to be your best friend in the stand-up domain. However, let's talk about some easy takedowns. We're gonna look at a double leg today. I wanna demonstrate our double leg first, and then we're gonna talk about some basic grip schemes, stand-up concepts, entries, and of course, finishes. Now, I'm gonna start off first with a collar and sleeve setup, okay? So we're gonna be kind of specific to the gi right now since we're all kind of uh, in the gi. So we're gonna be starting here with our collar and sleeve grip. So we both have gotten the collar grip and we both have a sleeve grip on our opponent here. Now our stance is going to be our basic grappling stance. I'm one foot in front, one foot behind. I'm gonna talk about some more details with the stance here in a moment. I'm gonna demonstrate our first of two different finishes that we're gonna be utilizing tonight. Tonight, uh, we're gonna to talk about sort of our basic one and then our more realistic variation. So the first one's gonna be super basic. I'll demonstrate slowly here. Okay guys, so this is our basic, basic finish. Now, this is going to see us basically tackling our partner. We're gonna drive straight through them, tackle and finish on top. Let's talk about a couple things. First, starting off with our stance. Everything in jiu-jitsu when it comes to your stand-up starts with your stance. If I'm just kind of standing willy-nilly, I'm not gonna be able to pull or take them down. So I'm gonna start by putting my right foot in front, generally your dominant leg. My back foot is gonna be behind me, about shoulder width apart. I wanna be on the side of my back foot so I can push off and I don't lose my balance. If I'm on my tippy toes or I'm standing on a tight rope, it's much more likely I'll lose my balance here. My knees are gonna be bent, my hips are back, and I'm covering my front knee with my front hand and my back hand is ready to intercept and fight any grips off. From here, we're gonna get our collar and sleeve grip. With this collar and sleeve grip, I'm gonna be taking my left arm and I'm gonna be pummeling it to an inside position. I'm gonna be hooking on his bicep here. The reason I wanna do this is because I wanna control the space in between my opponent's limbs to generate more movement. So again, my left hand that's on the sleeve, I'm gonna pummel to an inside position and now I have the ability to lift this arm. I should be able to affect my opponent's posture pretty significantly with this. I should be able to pull, snap, and move them around pretty effectively utilizing this inside bicep hook. But for our purposes tonight, I'm gonna use this inside bicep hook to lift this elbow up. After I lift this elbow up, I've created much more of an opening for my body to enter. What we're doing here is a level change. I'm gonna lift as I level change. I'm bending my knees while maintaining the integrity of my spinal column. I don't wanna do this and bend my back. So it's like I'm sitting in a chair. So again, I'm opening up the elbow and level changing. As soon as I level change, my right knee is gonna to look to drop right in between his feet as I shuck his arm over my head and I slide my body straight forward like I'm drawing the letter L. So I go down and out. I wanna be like a plane getting ready to take off, not a plane that's landing. So I don't wanna do downhill into my opponent's legs. So again, from here, we're gripped up. I pummel for an inside position. As I lift, I level change. My eye should be right around the line of his belt, 
and I'm gonna pull my partner over my head as I shoot myself nice and deep. I want my knee to be in between his legs and I want my partner's weight over top of me. If Coach Seth were to kind of jump, he should be able to balance on top of my back pretty effectively, okay? Now from here, we're gonna keep things really basic with our finish right now. I'm gonna drive straight through my partner. Head up high, I'm simply gonna connect my hands together. I'll explain why we're doing that in a moment. Now my goal is to drive straight through my partner and finish in a heavy tripoded position. Once I have my partner on the mat, my job is now to hold them here for three seconds. Because in order for me to score my points, I need to maintain top control for three seconds. So this is one reason why we're trying to connect their knees together. I don't want him to put me into any form of guard, right? If I'm keeping his knees squeezed together, it's less likely that he'll be able to lock me up with those legs really quick. So what I want us to do, once I make him hit the mat, I want the bottom person gently, like 30, 40%, try to stand up. Top person, focus on keeping their hips and their legs under control. Three seconds of control, two points, okay? Again, I'll rotate this way. We're starting in a good stance here. We're gonna grip up, collar and sleeve. Okay, we're head to head. I pummel for my inside position. I'm gonna start to open that elbow up. Remember, I should be able to create a lot of good movement here. Okay, so I can use this to shift my partner around. So I'm lifting as I level change. When I level change, I'm pulling him and I'm driving my knee right through him. Just remember the letter L, guys. That really helps a lot of people. I want to go down and in. Even at the end, look how my body resembles the letter L. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be like this, right? Even here, okay? I want good posture, good driving leg, head up high, okay? Again, pommel. As I lift, boom, I come in deep. Active toes. I don't want my shoelaces on the mat. Connect, I'm gonna pinch his knees and fold. Heavy shoulder, three seconds. One, two, and three. And then we're all done. At the end, guys, just be very concerned about that guard. I don't ever wanna go into the closed guard. So one thing that you can add on is after you make them hit the mat, boom, after I've made them hit the mat, my head is gonna stay on one side and I jump my legs over and I can start shelving his leg up on top, similar to how we did with our leg drag. All right, guys? So feel free to add that piece in after you've controlled the top position for a three count. I'm gonna show one more time, a couple different perspectives, nice and slowly. Here we go. All right, guys, we'll do one more time going this away. Super slow motion. Alrighty guys, top person, you're gonna be falling. Person who's falling, you're gonna be falling. When you're falling, I want you to focus on keeping your chin tucked so you don't hit the back of your head and not overly resisting the takedown. Move with their momentum and kind of unravel yourself. We never stick our hands out to catch ourselves, right? I never want a 90 degree limb to the mat, broken wrist. I always wanna make sure that I'm absorbing the impact by unraveling my body. So you noticed, whenever Coach Seth was falling back, he was staying tucked, and he kind of rolled out like a chain reaction. Alrighty guys, so go slow to start. Does anybody need to see it again? Again, this is our super basic, like, elementary school option for our double leg. We'll talk about our more nuanced variation next. All right, let's go, one, two. Oops. All right, this is looking very good, guys. Again, I just wanna remind you, we're training in a sport of jiu-jitsu, right? It's completely different from wrestling right? Freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman, right? It doesn't matter, right? That's an entirely different sport. Jiu-Jitsu matches are longer, different tactics and techniques. So you guys are essentially learning a new sport right now. So you guys are doing really well. So I don't want you to think like, you know, if this is giving you trouble and making like it's difficult for you, that's okay. That's totally understandable. It's something that we're working on. It's a new aspect, okay? So this is good, guys. A couple notes here before we look at our second variation. I want to first focus on our posture, and then I want to focus on how we're entering into our shot. I'm gonna have coach just start in the T pose just so that way you know, we're keeping things very visible and clear. 
OK, guys, so again, starting in my good stance here. As I go for my level change, again, I want to, we use the belt as like a nice little rule of thumb, right? I want my eyes right around belt level. I, I, again, though, it's not hard and fast, right? I want to just make sure I bend my knees, but keep my eyes up and my back nice and rigid. If I'm going here, I'm immediately breaking my posture. He can start to push my head down. So I level change here. Now, when I actually try to get my knee in between his feet, I want to make sure that I'm going heel to the toe, and then my knee is going to break this pane of glass right in between his knees here. OK? So if, if I imagine like his legs, if we turn this way, his legs have a pane of glass in between them. If I simply put my leg, my knee here, and I make this triangle, I didn't actually get underneath my opponent. I want to be able to load my opponent's weight up on top of my back. So I want that knee to crash through the glass. So look, I level change, heel, toe, look at my knee, crash through it. Now once I'm in this shot position, same rules apply for your stance. I can't be here. Okay, He just pushes my head down, and I'm totally gone. All right, I can't have my butt way back behind me. Now I don't have any drive, any sprawl is really easy. I want to be essentially perpendicular. Okay? I want my back and my spine to be the load-bearing frame that's going to keep him elevated. So if I'm overextending myself like this, this should just look wrong. right? This shouldn't even look like I'm doing real grappling. right? I want to be upright. My hips are underneath my head. Now, this is crucial for our second variation. This first variation that we worked on is fine. It's um, very entry level. But normally, when we're finishing a double leg, we want to immediately get our body across theirs to become perpendicular. So that way, we don't even have to worry about the guard. So the way that we would do this, everything's going to be in the, same, in the same as in the beginning, right? I pummel for the inside position. As I start to open that elbow up, I level change, shoot. But now that I'm here, instead of driving forwards, I'm going to start to build up on my bottom knee out to the side and pull right on top. So my posture was still rigid the whole time. So I'm here, head up, look up to the stars. Easy way to remember it. If I start to look down, they push. Also opens up guillotine. But now, instead of driving straight forward and kind of dumping and folding them, I'm going to build up onto my opposite knee and drive off this leg to go to the side. And as I'm going, I'm pulling their knee. Okay? I'm pulling their knee up, and I'm immediately walking my body around to the side of their legs. This will immediately, immediately take us to that side control shelved position. So again. We're here, head to head. I pummel for the inside position. I'm going to level change as I open that elbow. This inside position with the uh, inside hook grip here, this helps us deal with a stiff arm. If he stiff arms me, I'm never going to get there. I need to address this in some way. Okay? Maybe I grip break and then move it. Right? That's an option. Here, we're simply changing that frame into a lever. And that allows us to open up the space. So again, boom, I come here. Now, grabbing your hands together is fine. This is good. I personally like to go one on one. So pinkies right behind the knee pits. And now look here, guys. See how his weight's over top of me. This is perfect. Now I'm going to build up on my bottom knee as I drive him perpendicular. Don't go here. See how my butt came up? As I start to lift, as I start to stand, my back needs to stay rigid. Keep the head connected to him, drive, and immediately I finish on top. Okay, one more time from the uh, front-ish direction here. Slow motion. Look, immediately I'm shelving that knee, block the guard from re-entering. All right, I'll show one more time, taking him towards y'all, so we'll go this way. Slow motion, guys, we're here. Tied up, inside bicep hook. As I start to lift, look, I go heel, toe, level change. I come in deep, hands to the back. I step, and I use my head to push him. I don't want to pull him on top of my own head. That's a recipe for disaster. I use my head to drive him the other way. And immediately, I bundle up his legs, keep that ear to his hip, three count. Un, deux, trois. There's your two points. All righty, guys. Slow with this one, OK? Person who's falling, being taken down. Again, keep your chin tucked. 
slowly go to collapse. Because we're going at an obtuse angle to the mat, you can stick your hand out, but just make sure you're rolling that arm. Never stick it 90 degrees. Okay, slow. Please be gentle with the takedown. And top person, person doing the takedown, we're not slamming. So I don't want you to lift them, boom, and then slam them on the, on the mat, okay? Nice and gentle. Let's go, one, two. All right, looking good. A uh, couple notes on that finish, and then I, I just want to touch on when they get the guillotine, just how to deal with that. Because it's a very common thing in jiu-jitsu, right? When you go for a double leg, they're going to try to catch your neck and do a guillotine to it for you. All right, so everything was looking good in the beginning, guys. Our entry was nice. Okay, we've been working on that the whole class, so it's looking good. So guys, when I get to this position, I want to make sure that I'm driving off of this foot. Okay, so the leg that's like my kickstand, I'm almost jumping. Like I want to kind of push and drive myself into them. And I don't want to think of this like a one and done type of deal. I want to keep shuffling to the side. Right? So I'm driving with my head, like I'm using my head like a battering ram. Okay? My head drives, I push off this foot, and I basically start running and shuffling into them to finish on top. Okay? The whole while, my head's leading. So I'm driving with that head, and look how. I level chain shoot, and I push hard off that kickstand to start driving. This is what's going to start to tip and shift their center of gravity. Inevitably, when you shoot for a guillotine, they're going to grab your neck. When they shoot for a double, when, you shoot. when I shoot for a double, <laughs> they're going to grab my neck. So I'm here. Flip the mic over here. OK. So inevitably, they're going to grab my neck. Still finish the takedown. Let's uh, turn this way. So I'm still going to finish the takedown, right? I'm going to roll. Well, but now, they grab my neck here. Guys, this is a fool's errand for the bottom person. Bottom person, this is a false positive. You're not doing a good guillotine right now. If I don't have a guard. Right, if you don't have your legs controlling them, this is worthless. In fact, this is worse than if you were to just not do a guillotine because he's not actively framing. So just a quick side note, if I ever end up here, walk his rear hip and just start walking. Very easy way to start to get them to let go. Kind of. World, the world champion. Here it is. Okay. <sighs> All right. So, again, I want to use my forearm, essentially like pain compliance. If they're hugging my neck, I'm going to put the forearm in their throat, but I block their near hips so they can't follow me. And now I'm just going to start to walk to north-south and pop my head out. And then I can immediately reestablish side control with cross face. I always like to just show this little detail because white belts tend to get into a bad habit of doing this bad guillotine from the bottom. So I want to show you that it's not good. But then sometimes people will get caught, and they'll freak out, and they'll get scared and tap. This is nothing you need to tap to. Okay, You're not in danger. Just free your head. Forearm in the neck. Block the hip that's closest to you, and literally just start to walk and drive your weight in. They'll let go. Okay, Let's try one more round. Be nice with this. Don't actually like elbow them in the neck. Right? Just apply a little pressure and just start to walk. Let's go one more round. One, two. 